What's up guys? Mike here and today's video is all about first time home buyers. Buying a home is one of the most exciting times of your life and the biggest purchase of your life and it can be filled with a lot of emotional highs and lows. It's a great accomplishment and it can be incredibly fun. But today's video is about certain things that home buyers do that makes the experience not so fun. As a real estate professional, I have seen many home buyers make some serious mistakes along the way. The point of this video today is to make you aware of these mistakes so you avoid them and have a wonderful home buying experience. I'm gonna share eight common home buyer mistakes with you and if you stick around to the end of the video, you'll get my number one bonus mistake that all home buyers tend to make that can save you a ton of headache in the long run. So guys, if you like investing in stocks, crypto, and you want an awesome interactive app experience, then consider downloading the Webull app today where you sign up, you deposit $100, you get two free stocks, just click the link in the description below. So let's get on with it. The first mistake most, if not all, home buyers make is going to view homes without being pre-qualified. Now I get it, looking at homes is exciting, especially when you're on the verge of making your first purchase and owning real estate. I've been there, I totally get it. However, doing so is a waste of your time and it's a waste of your agent's time. Here's why. When you go out and you look at homes and you're not pre-qualified and ready to make an offer on a home that, say, you really like, you know, you're competing against other buyers, you're, you're really wasting your time. But unless you have the means to make an offer and submit a proof of funds or a pre-qualification letter, especially in today's competitive market, no one has time to go show you homes if you are not pre-qualified and ready to actually make a purchase. Getting pre-qualified shows that you are taking steps and being serious about owning a home in the near future. This is going to save you, as the buyer, a lot of emotional highs and lows as well because let's say you go out and look at a property you like and now you can't actually compete and maybe even have a chance to get it because you don't have a pre-qualification letter already ready to go. I always ask for a pre-qualification letter from prospective buyers before I take them out to show them homes. The second mistake that home buyers make is unrealistic expectations, AKA looking for a unicorn. Look guys, part of the job of a real estate agent and what I do for my clients is to coach them on their expectations and give them information to help them understand what types of homes and amenities that their budget will allow them to afford. Let's be honest, most new home buyers want champagne dreams on a beer budget. Champagne wishes and caviar dreams. The third mistake guys is feeling rushed. Now I know there's a lot of excitement when buying your first home and you tend to want to move very fast as the eurofic feelings take you over and you want to just get the house and complete the process and it's totally understandable. However, there are many factors that an agent can help you with in this process when choosing a home. For example, you don't want to buy your house like an impulse buy at the checkout line at a grocery store. This often leads to buyer's remorse and the buyer will end up blaming you, the agent, for allowing them to move forward on something that they ultimately weren't happy with. An agent's job is to help buyers focus on making logical decisions when they're driven by emotional feelings. So if you can separate those two, address to them what their initial needs and concerns are for the home purchase, and try to see if there's a match there with that particular home that they're hot on right now, and move from there. The fourth mistake is underestimating your expenses to purchase a home. Look, a lot of buyers severely underestimate the amount of money that they will need to purchase a home. There's a lot of elements that they don't think about or even consider when buying a home from last minute rate adjustments, to buying points down on your interest rate, to paying for inspections, to paying for appraisals, to paying for repairs, and closing costs needed to close. Those are just some of the things that can pop up in a real estate transaction and make your deal go sideways if you aren't prepared to handle them. It's your agent's job to educate you about these upcoming expenses and to, to talk to your lender to get a closing cost worksheet to work through it with you so that way you know ahead of time what is expected of you financially at the closing table. The fifth mistake is falling in love with any house. Now, what does that really mean? Well, it's rare that a particular home that you happen to see today is going to fit your needs and fit your future needs down the road five years from now. Coupled with that, the national average 
time that people stay in a home is five to seven years. So if you're not, if that's not your forever home that you're gonna stay in for 25 years, the odds are it may not meet your needs down the road. So tr again, try to look at the try to look at that home and see how it fits and serves your needs today, as well as how it could possibly fit and serve your future needs. The sixth mistake: thinking that renting is throwing your money away. The market is always changing, and sometimes renting has its financial advantages over owning. It just depends. Let me explain. Some advantages of renting can be not having to be liable to pay for repairs and maintenance. Another advantage is access to amenities that you normally wouldn't have access to, like maybe a pool or a hot tub or a jacuzzi, because you live in an apartment complex where that's included in your rent. Whereas if you owned a home, you would have to buy those items outright. Another advantage of renting is not having to pay a hefty down payment or pay real estate taxes. Another advantage is you have more flexibility as to where you live. You can live in an apartment, a townhouse, a single family home, a high rise, a mobile home. You can live pretty much wherever if you're renting. When you're renting, you have lower utility costs and lower insurance costs. So again, it's not always best to own over renting. It depends on your situation. I mean, sure, you wanna build equity eventually, but if the timing isn't right for you, then maybe renting is the better option. The seventh mistake is buying for capital gains. Now, what does this mean? That means don't go buying a home expecting the value of that home to go up. Sometimes that doesn't work in your favor. As the old saying goes, it is your time in the market, not your timing of the market. I've seen a lot of people get burned by that one. Real estate cycles come and go, and there is no guarantees whatsoever that you buy that once you buy a home, your home value is just going to go up. It could go down and you could lose out. The eighth mistake that I see new home buyers make is believing the zestimate. Look, I can tell you as a real estate agent, I've hosted hundreds of open houses. I've met tons of buyers that have came to those open houses and looked at those homes. But you know what the one person who I've never met is? That's right, the Zillow Zestimate man. You see, I've never once seen Zillow or Redfin or Trulia or any of these internet companies that supposedly know the market come through the house in person and actually look at a property, physically feel and touch it and see it, and then give you a valuation based on them actually showing up and seeing the property. I've never seen that. So how can they truly know? In fact, the Zillow CEO himself recently sold his home and it sold 40% less than his own website's estimate. So uh, you ain't gonna see that on the front page of Zillow, are you? I don't think so. So don't put too much faith as a buyer in the, Zill in the Zestimate of a property because often it's misleading information and it's wrong. So thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, guys. And if you've gotten some value out of this video, please do me a huge favor. It's completely free. Just like the video, subscribe, and if you wanna click the notification bell, I will be posting here weekly talking about videos related to real estate and making money and all that good stuff. And as always, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I answer every single person that responds in a comment. So now, as promised, here is the number one bonus tip for new home buyers. And that is simply, drum roll, don't go it alone. Get agent representation. So here's 10 reasons why you need agent representation when you buy a home. Top priority, when you hire an agent work for you, they, you are their top priority. I can tell you from firsthand experience, when I work with a, cust with a prospect who is committed to me, I am 100% committed to them and helping them through a transaction and representing their best interests first and foremost in every step of that transaction. If you go it alone, you're dealing with an agent who is representing the seller and they have their interests at heart, not yours. So, and anything comes down, it's gonna be very tricky. And if your deal goes sideways, it can create a lot of problems for you. The number two reason is education. A real estate agent is a profession, though some seem to think that it's not. It is a profession and many people, including myself, take it very seriously. So having a real estate professional on your side to represent you, who is keen to the tips and all the nuances of the industry and understands the business of real estate is very critical to you having a successful transaction when buying a home. Local knowledge. 
Not only do real estate agents have local intimate knowledge of the market, but they also have a great grasp on the area where they help people buy and sell homes. Odds are the agent that you may work with would know about maybe mar properties that are coming to market that could give you an advantage to get over other buyers. You wanna lean into your agent as they're a great resource for a variety of topics in the neighborhood and the particular home that you may want to find. The next one is professional connections. Con taking a, a real estate transaction from A to Z is a team sport and your, your agent will have professional connections with appraisers, inspectors, lenders, people at the county for city and zoning and planning, their broker, all types of other people that are involved in the transaction to help you get across the finish line and successfully buy a home. Without those connections, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to do a real estate transaction and have it be successful and go your way. The next one is pricing. When selling a home, agents can help you set the right price for the market to get you competitive offers and end up with a great offer that you're happy with. As a buyer's agent, a buyer's job is to make sure that you're not making offers on homes that have inflated pricing and are actually overvalued and to protect you from that. So you definitely want to use an agent because they have intimate knowledge of the market and they can run comps and pull data that you cannot pull. Showings. When, as a buyer's agent, you take agent you take your buyers out to show them properties. A lot of the properties they would not have access to if they try to go without an agent because they simply won't know about those properties. Yes, they can look on Zillow and they can look on Redfin and all that stuff, but their data is weeks old. And a lot of the times, they'll think that a property is still available when in fact it's already under contract and literally about to close. So they'll waste a lot of their time driving to homes and trying to talk to listing agents and listing agents are gonna shut them down and be like, the house already closed. So you have to think of that. You want up to, up to the minute market data and doing that without an agent is very hard to achieve. Next is negotiations. The last thing you wanna do when you're buying or selling a home is negotiate a real estate transaction without the expertise of an agent who understands the real estate industry. An experienced agent can help you make a viable offer, a serious offer, and an attractive offer to get your offer accepted amongst other buyers. They're your expert for every aspect of negotiating, so lean into them and don't go it alone. The next one is paperwork. Buying and selling a home requires a lot of paperwork. Are you prepared to deal with endless pages of contracts and real estate lingo term terminology just to figure out if you should sign or initial? Your real estate agent is there to help you get through all this much faster. Honesty. When you're going through a real estate transaction, you want someone on your team that is honest and transparent with you. Your real estate agent that is representing you will provide this for you. Your agent is there to give you an honest, no non-biased opinion of the home and its value. Buyers can rely on their agent to tell them if their needs and wants are realistic, if their offer is reasonable, and a whole slew of other things. Agents want to be honest and to make you happy because after all, if you're happy, then you will refer them other business. And lastly is your time. If you don't think you need a real estate transactions for any one of the above mentioned that I talked about, then the last one you for surely need is for your time. It takes a lot of time and energy to get through a real estate transaction. With a real estate agent's help by your side, it can shorten the duration of a real estate transaction significantly and make it a much more enjoyable, less stressful experience for you, the buyer. Besides, who are you going to turn to when your deal goes sideways? Again, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll respond to them all. If you're looking for a real estate agent to represent you in the Las Vegas or Atlanta metro area, my email is in the description below. Please feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.